after risk reduction. Uh, recently, every uh, we experience very severe rainfall disasters, especially very big is uh, July 2018 and also 2019. Uh, 2018, this was a rainfall event and very severe rainfall happened with some very wide area, with some parts of Japan. And 2019, very big super typhoon hit uh, east and northern part of Japan. And these uh, provided a record breaking rainfall and uh, damage was huge. Um, in 2018, uh, 237, uh, unfortunately, uh, people lost their lives and eight missing and maybe breaching a uh, total 73 rabies. And 2019, 99 deaths and three missing. And um, rabies breaching is huge, uh, 140. And economic losses in this 2019 flood was record breaking, 2,180 billion Japanese yen. So the impact assessment of climate change on hydrologic extremes and adaptation strategy planning by project maker is very, very urgent issue. So today I'd like to talk is, at first I'd like quickly to talk about Dihopedia. This data was a large ensemble climate change projection data uh, developed by uh, Meteorological Research Institute. So the characteristics of this, 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 this DHOPDF is a very large um, ensemble number of the data. Is very, this is very important. And, and then impact assessment. Uh, civil engineers or water resource engineers, flood and inundation modeling and flood projections and impact assessment of climate change on flood risk. And then this information goes to uh, government of the Japan policy makers, adaptation strategy. The government of Japan has decided to incorporate climate change scenario data into flood control planning and already began to review the flood control plan. So I'd like to talk about this very uh, in this uh, next 10 minutes. At first, uh, the data. So this covers entire growth with 60 kilometer resolution and eastern part of the area, uh, 20 kilometer resolution data. So this is a simulation area settings and experimental design is one is two degree increase scenario data and also extreme cases, four degree increase scenario data. And very important characteristics is uh, for 60 kilometer resolution data, uh, we have opportunity to use total 6,000 years time series data. Uh, this long time series data is very, very important to evaluate very, very rare extreme event. And four degree increase scenario, this is also we had opportunity to use uh, 5,400 years time series data. So these are uh, very, very long time series data with ensemble member. This is what a very important characteristics of the data. Then I'd like to quickly talk about what kind of information we can obtain by using this data. Uh, we applied these rainfall data into all over the Japanese catchment. And I would like to talk about the result focusing on Yodo River Basin, this covers Osaka and Kyoto area. So this is the second largest uh, city area in Japan. So this figure shows that uh, left hand side, this shows X axis is annual maximum 24 hours rainfall data and Y axis is uh, non exceeded probability and this and also return period. So you can clearly see that this blue dot is uh, this was uh, the relationship between uh, historic current climate, historical climate, 200 years, 200 uh, millimeter per 24 hours, and this no exceeds probability is about 98%. Uh, this means about 80 years return period. So this relationship, this blue is simulation data come from DHOPD. And quite nice is we have total 3,000 years data, so we can have this line. And black dot is observation data, so this much is very well. And then very important thing is this red line shows 
who under unfortunately increased scenarios. So this clearly shows that future 200 years uh, rainfall becomes much more bigger. And our finding is currently 900 years rainfall is also, we can evaluate by using this data. And four degree increase scenario, 200 years rainfall is higher than 900 years of rainfall. And the left hand side is we give this rainfall into rainfall runoff model, and also we can evaluate the relationship between discharge and non efficient probability. And this is also without doubt, we can see that four degree increase scenario, uh, river discharge becomes much more higher. So this is uh, entire Japanese catchment. And the x-axis shows river base index, uh, one, two, three. This is the north part of the catchment. And 100 and 100, 101, one, one, blah, blah. So this is the southern part of the catchment. And this shows uh, how the annual maximum peak discharge will increase. This y-axis shows the ratio. Northern area um, almost doubled. Peak distance becomes double. And this is show the, uh, the range estimated by uh, sea surface temperature ensembles. And southern part, Kyushu and this area, this is also 1.5 times higher. So we are really, uh, really uh, we need to recognize that this increase, this is very serious. And also this is, simultaneous flood probability under four degree increase scenario. So this means, for example, five more than five catchment experience flood disaster at the same time, same years. This probability is around this, but current climate, something like this. So this is exceedance probability. So blue line is historical climate, current climate, and red one is four degree increase scenario. So this is clearly indicates that uh, the, uh, the catchment um, we experience the flood at the same time because much more higher. And flood risk, for example, inundation disasters. Through the inundation, through the subway, uh, very, very extreme cases, uh, flooded waters go to the different area through the subway. This was expected. And also uh, what we have done is to obtain the relationship between economic damage and exceedance probability. So by using inundation simulation, it is possible to estimate this uh, evaluation, how we have experienced damage in a probabilistic way. So how to cope with it? One is very important is real-time flood prediction and also strengthening of flood control capacity by dams. Now we are doing this uh, technological uh, improvement. So one is uh, rainfall runoff model for all over the nationwide catchment. So this is an example now uh, on a real-time basis, uh, 150 meter resolution uh, rainfall and inundation model is now uh, we are operating and we look at the, uh, maybe this will be hopefully future, this will be installed to all over the Japanese area and also dam reserve operations. So if we have ensemble uh, predictions, at least this is a minimum maybe predictive inflow and this is ensemble medium and this is maybe ensemble maximum. So we have these uh, prediction with uncertainty. Then based on this information, at least we can pre-release the dam reserve storage because at least this water will come to the dam reservoirs after the flood. So much more fully uh, utilize the dam reserve capacity. These ensemble prediction, real-time prediction is also very important. Then uh, remaining time, I'd like to introduce Japan's new policy on water-related disaster risk reduction. The name is River Basin Disaster Resilience, Resilience and Sustainability by All. Last year, uh, the government of Japan uh, changed their policy, and this is a new policy. I'd like to quickly to talk about the content of this new policy. The background is I have talked that impact of maybe climate change and the very big flood disaster happen every year. And also 
social trends are ja Japan facing declining of the population and also aging population. So this is very, very uh, increase of vulnerability of the uh, uh, related for, for the uh, uh, natural disasters. And at the same time, we have uh, opportunity to fully utilize new technology for new prediction. So by you, by in this situation, uh, without doubt, flood intensity will increase. Then how to cooperate? One is uh, transition to river basin disaster resilience and sustainability by, by all. This means uh, for a long, long time, uh, Japanese basic policy is to construct dikes or dam reservoirs. And uh, when the very big flood happens uh, to flow the flood water uh, very quickly through the rivers. But unfortunately, uh, due to the climate change, uh, the uh, rainfall increase and river discharge increase. So it is not easy to flow the water only the rivers. So uh, many people related to the river and the land need to cooperate each other. So this means by all. And revised plan for flood control means currently uh, Japanese government only use past historical precipitation, precipitation, precipitation data or tidal level record. Only observation data is used, but new plan consider the impact of climate change, for example, uh, rainfall increase and also river discharge increase. And many researchers have done this research and also uh, the governmental researchers is also analyze the future change of precipitation and river discharge. Then government clearly recognize that it is important to incorporate the future climate change scenario data into uh, this uh, flood protection plan. So these two, these two is a very big change in happened in recent years. So Professor Anurag and everybody, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Tachikawa. So, uh,